talk about hats now. We did the guitars. Anyway, thanks to Scott for that amazing guitar that was gifted to me. Just changed the strings on that Strat. It sounds incredible. Anyway, as I stall and think of something to say that's hat related, uh, I just want to thank everybody for all the um, subscriptions and thumbs ups and amazing interaction and comments and stuff. That stuff means a lot more uh, to me than you guys even know. It's really cool interacting with everybody and anytime you need help with any hat related stuff, um, I'm here. So, all right, let's talk a little bit more about the parts of your hat. Um, we got into different, you know, things like the reeded sweatband uh, in my last video. The reed is basically the end right here. This part, the end of the sweatband, it looks like a little tube. Okay. There's something in there. It's like a piece of nylon string that gives it its tension and stuff. So I was talking about hats that were too tight. Um, a lot of people, they want to know what to do. Now, one very good trick for a hat that's too tight, all right, right in the back here, where there's a seam, okay, that line, that seam thing, at the very tip of the seam, where the seam meets the reed, okay, right there, right there, that point, you can take a razor blade and actually just slice the reed, like, kind of like this, like, Slice it open. It's almost like stripping a wire. You know, the people that uh, do electronics, you have wire strippers. You take like that black or the red stuff covering off the wire to expose the wire. So what you're doing is you're getting rid of this uh, little piece of brown reed or whatever. You're cutting it. And what you're doing essentially is breaking the tension of that circle. So if you've got, let's say, a piece of piano wire in there, okay, that's really tight and your head's inside and it's just too tight, it's choking you. It's like, ah, this little thing. If you just relieve the tension in the back, clip, there you go. It's not like taking a piece of piano wire and pulling it over your head too tight. It's like a broken piece of piano wire, so it's got no more tension. So yeah, it's not amazing cutting the reed in your hat, but if you've got a hat that's too tight and just can't wear it, you know, that's what you got to do. You got to cut that, all right? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut the reed, bam. Now, secondly, if you want to pull the reed out, that's, that's even better. I mean, you don't have to do this. Again, taking the reed out will give you a little bit less structure. It's going to make your hat softer. What the reed does is it makes the hat return to the circular oval shape, if you notice. It's, it's always, no matter what you do, it always wants to kind of come back to a circle. That's what that piece of nylon does in there. It's a piece of fishing. So if you totally remove it, get it out, throw it away, you're still fine. Your hat's not going to fall apart. Um, you can take some stitches and close that if that bothers you. I personally don't really care so much, you know. You could just glue it back or something if you want. Um, all right, this is one way to take a hat and, and stretch it, it you know. If you have a problem with a hat being too tight, now I get this every single day. I get calls, I get people coming in, bringing me hats, I have people asking me questions, I got hats at home that are too tight or too big, what can you do? Okay. So I know it's a really common problem. What happens is that people buy hats that fit like perfectly and then they leave it up in their closet and then the closet's super hot all winter and there's like radiators just banging out steam and the leather dehydrates and then maybe they didn't even wear it that winter and then another year passes and you got every single day the leather is drying out shrinking 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 and then you put it on you're like wait a minute this hat's too tight so that's what's going on you got to keep your hats away from heat especially if they have leather bands inside everything shrinks they say fur felt doesn't shrink that's why they use it um, instead of wool felt Fur felt does shrink, everything shrinks, leather shrinks, it all dehydrates, it doesn't matter what it is, it might shrink a lot less than a wool felt, uh, but everything will be uh, damaged, 
and affected by heat. So don't leave your straw hat out on the dashboard to, to dry if it's wet, you know. The, the leather sweatband is going to dry in the sun and it's going to be a size too tight. Um, if your house is super hot in the winter, try to find cooler places to store your hats. Hang them in the basement. Um, I don't know what to say. Crack the window a little bit. It's the same thing if you have guitars. Um, I turn off this radiator. There's a radiator right next to me here. You see it? Uh, it's off. So we have enough heat like just in the walls. The walls are hot enough. So I don't want these guitars to get damaged. My bedroom has no heat and um, it's fine. My house ha just has way too much heat. So if I turn off one or two radiators in a couple of bedrooms, it has zero effect. It's basically we feel better. So if you have anything that's wood, leather, um, like uh, fine furniture, uh, violins, you know, things that are, you know, whatever, leather boots, uh, any of these items are going to shrink up from the heat. So protect them. Keep them in a nice cool place if you can. The other thing is storage. You don't want to store your hat in the basement or something in a piece of plastic. Hats have to breathe. Um, so don't store your hats, your caps, your furs, or any of this stuff wrapped up in plastic. If you notice, when they put plastic on these hats, it's only the top. It's a dust cover. They usually don't use whole bags because if you put it in a bag and you tie up the plastic bag, it's going to get moldy, mildew, or whatever. It's not going to dry completely and you're going to have whatever mold organisms growing in there, some sort of vegetation that's not safe. Um, you don't want that. So, don't wrap your hats in plastic. You can cover them in plastic on the top. And if you have one of those uh, Western, we call them a Western bag, the, the bag type dust covers like they put on Western hats, don't tie it. Keep it open. The air has to circulate inside your hat. Um, I take my linings out, if you notice. I just don't use linings. So I've got full hair so I don't have a problem with you know like my there's no bald spot here but if you have thin hair on top if you shave your head if you're a shaved head guy if you are very very you know like your hair is like tennis ball kind of uh, I don't know what that's called Mr. George Clooney sort of guy dude if you're one of those guys with a really short short hair that's just as good as being bald all these things are gonna make sweat so you need a lining in your hat. Um, if you've got fairly full hair, you know, like a regular head of hair and not really a big ball spot or anything up there, you're not going to get sweat stains on the top. It's just not an issue for you. You know, this is a 20-year-old hat, nothing. Um, but you will get them here, okay? And if you have a shaved head, you're going to get it here and all the way around. So you got to think about those things, too. Um, what am I getting at? I guess I'm getting at prevention. Um, if you think that you're gonna sweat up a hat, get the little pads. I told you about those things. Sweat wigs and stuff. Change your ribbon. Be vigilant and watch it because once the sweat gets beyond that band, if it gets into the felt itself, we can't clean that. All right, let's talk about the tight hats again. What else can we do with a tight hat? Um, we talked about cutting the reed. We talked about removing the reed. Now, what about hat stretchers? I have a few people, um, customers of mine, who leave hat stretchers inside their hats, just like a shoe tree type of thing. They buy hat stretchers, you know, it's like an extra $30 for each hat stretcher. They buy them off the internet and they keep them in their hat. Now, is this good? No, it's bad. Um, you're going from the old shoe tree days, that's different. A shoe kind of collapses and loses its shape, so you put a shoe tree in it to keep its shape and stuff. A hat doesn't need something like that. Um, and if it did need it, it would be more like a hat-shaped object, not a stretcher. So what happens is the hat stretcher is kind of like a reverse vice. It's like two half-moon pieces of wood that go, you crank it open. So people leave them in kind of like a half moon of wood here, a half moon of wood here, and they leave it in the hat and they put it in the box. This basically what it does is it makes your hat go like this. So if your hat looks like this with your hat jacks in it and stuff, that's why. Um, 
hat stretchers are meant to stretch hats that are too small. So if you inherited your dad's hat or something and it doesn't fit you, you're supposed to stretch it. You stretch it once, it fits you, you stop using it. Now you can keep using it if your hat keeps shrinking, but you're not supposed to leave it inside your hat. Um, it's just definitely bad. It's not a good thing. Now, what kind of things can you buy and can you do to keep your hats nice? I do understand there are customers that, you know, have a few dollars to spend on this hobby um, and they want to, you know, buy whatever's necessary. But um, hat jacks, hat stretchers, that's unnecessary. In fact, it's harmful. So um, use a hat jack for stretching. That's it. That's what I'm getting at. Now, when you use a hat jack, it's um, kind of like a bar with a wood and a wood thing there. And you, you go like this, you sort of crank it and it opens up, opens up kind of like a jack or a vice sort. So what it does is it stretches the hat, it gets it like really distorted while it's, you know, people get really cringy when they see me doing, you know, it does this. And what you're supposed to do is stretch it pretty much to the max and hit it with steam back here. Okay, now here's where the seam is of the hat. You see the seam? Okay. We want to steam that seam and make it more elastic and stretchy and soft so it doesn't pop and so it doesn't get damaged and ruin the strength and integrity of the hat. Okay, now we don't want to steam it directly on there because hot steam, you know, hundreds of degrees right on a leather band is going to destroy it, dehydrate it, and sometimes in a split second burns it. If you have a vintage hat or any hat that has a dried up uh, sweatband that's very dry, the second the steam touches it, it goes and shrinks into this little hard piece of like dehydrated like hard stuff. Um, it almost looks like a rawhide bone, like a you know a leather dog toy type of thing, and, and, and it just shrinks into nothing. Like all the remaining water in the hat just goes out in a second. So never, ever, ever steam the inside of a hat if there's leather there. Just don't do it. Any person who does that is just like an idiot. I've seen people say, oh, let me sterilize it, uh, put it on the inside there. Yeah, you have to sterilize it. Um, yeah. All right. Never steam the inside. Um, bands do not get steamed. I'm sorry I'm repeating myself, but okay. What we do when we use a hat jack, we put the jack in and we steam it from the outside, okay? So the, the heat goes through the hat, softens up that, um, that seam, and it makes it more elastic so that when you start cranking, you could crank, 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 and go crazy and really crank the hell out of it um, without damaging the hat. At this point, what you're looking at is the bow, okay? Now it's going to start to look kind of like this. It's going to stretch. These stitches, these stitches here on the bow are going to get so stretchy, it's going to get to the point where it looks like it's going to break. So you have to watch that as you crank. Watch the bow. Watch the bow. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Because if you go too far, that will pop off and then you're going to have to sew the bow back on, which I don't think you want to do. Okay. So generally, you know, you're watching the seam and stuff, but we you got to steam up the seam, stick it in, crank it open, watch that. Okay, when it gets to the point where it looks like it's just at the hilt and ready to break, you know, like that bow is like really, really stretched. I really can't simulate it, but it kind of looks like, like that, you know. When it looks like it's really about to break, then you stop cranking and you let it dry. Okay, now here's another thing. If you use a hat jack, you're going to get horrible stretch lines. You're going to get a line, okay? So the top of, let's say the hat jack is this thick. It's as thick as, all right, let's say it's this thick. It's thick as two fingers, right? You want the top line of the hat jack to be even with this line. So instead of having like a line, stretch line here, you disguise the line right there. So it's, it's either underneath or it's right with this band. So what I do is I put the hat jack in and I position it up and down until it's right there at this line. 
okay? Then I crank open because you are guaranteed to get a really, really bad stretch line when you use this, okay? If you, in fact, if you do any stretch that's worth a damn, the hat is going to be shaped like this when you're finished. No kidding, it's going to be like this because you stretch only this part. The hat jack is this thick. For some of your people, it's this thick, so you're stretching that much. All right, this is why hat jacks kind of suck. Um, you can't stretch big, big, because yeah, you got your hat and then you got the part you stretch comes out like a stair. So what do I do? You have to take the crown and just completely reshape it. You stick your fist in there and you rub out that line and stuff. I put it on one of those, uh, you know, I have that steel hat stretcher, put it over there and I pull against that line and stuff and I just get rid of all the stretch lines. So basically, when you stretch it, if you're stretching out anything that's worth a darn, you gotta stretch it so much that you're getting horrible like distortions and the hat is totally out of shape. When you're finished, you take the hat off the stretcher and you reshape the crown. It's, this is why stretching is really hard. Now you're saying to me, okay, I don't wanna stretch it that much. Yeah, well, if you crank it like five times or 10 times or something, it's gonna do nothing. Um, if you crank it to like this point and just like let go, um, it's going to just shrink back. So think of it this way. Okay, let's say you need to stretch your hat 5%. Okay, if you need to stretch your hat 5%, I'm not going to stretch it 5% because you're going to wind up with zero. I'm going to stretch it maybe 25 or 30%. And then everything will shrink back the next day or an hour later except maybe a little bit, you know, like that extra five. So I compensate for, for it shrinking back. So if I, wanna, if I wanna stretch it 10%, I might bring this hat up to like a 50% stretch, you know, like just massive, horrible, brutal stretch, you know. I do 50% stretch, I'm gonna wind up with like only 10%. Um, everybody else who stretches using hat jacks and using those steel stretch, everybody else fails, everybody except for me. Um, I'm a pretty humble guy too. I don't really ever make claims like that, you know, never. Um, but it's just true. If you want to stretch a hat this way, using a hat jack or any type of hat stretcher, you have to over stretch it like crazy. Um, yeah, it's going to feel good. Oh, thanks. That's perfect. Uh, can you do a little more? Okay, now it's perfect. Thank you. You get to the corner. Oh man, this feels tight. Oh man. You get a block away, it's completely tight again. Okay, you wake up the next day, you got this big red line in your head, and I'm like, oh man, that stretch did not work. This is what happens to every single stretch everywhere you go. I don't care what you say, nobody knows how to stretch. If you think my stretching is very brutal, that's why. Um, stretching doesn't really work. You have to overdo it, and um, I don't really like using hat jacks. Uh, hat jacks are not that great. Um, they're sometimes good if you want to stretch something a little bit oval, because then you could use a skinny hat jack and just go this way. Um, but for the most part, I like to use that big steel hat stretcher, the one made by Garv that I have uh, in my videos, the thing that's always uh, in front of the steamer. And those things come with heat. You can heat them up and plug them in, but I never use the heat. I use steam heat, and then I just use that as a form and stuff. But most of the time, you know, but what I do is I crank it open using this full uh, length stretcher, the steel one, and you're actually stretching the entire hat that way. Now, these are really, really strong. Um, so I'm a little scared of them and I don't like to overdo it. So sometimes I use hat jacks because they require a lot of elbow grease and I'm just afraid to break somebody's hat. But hat jacks are a big pain. If you use them, like I said, you're gonna get a big stretch mark. You're gonna get also like a stair step thing and you gotta have steam and be prepared to get rid of that. You know, I do stuff like this and I steam it all out and I make the whole hat domed again and then I reshape it. So I essentially just start again. In order to stretch, you got to really distort the hat. Okay, that's hat jacks. Hat jacks and um, steel hat stretchers. They are pretty efficient, I guess. It's, you know, that's going to make it work. Um, 
it really depends on how much stretching we're talking about. Now, if we're talking about a cap, like a newsboy cap or a flat cap, a kangol, a baseball cap, any kind of cloth cap like that, cloth is much easier to stretch than like a leather sweatband hat or something like that. Generally, I'll take a cloth cap, I'll pull it over my knee like this. I have a method where I hold the, um, the peak on both sides and then I hold the cap also. So the peak and the cap are both in my hands. So that way I can't pull the peak off or put any pressure on the part where the peaks attach to the cap. It's hard to explain, but I have a special way of holding it. And what I do is I just pull it over my knee like, <clears throat> like that. Now, stretching cloth is totally different. Uh, if you have a cloth cap, like a, a wool cap, most of the time you could just do the knee stretch. Um, you gotta be careful, you don't jerk it, you know, but you gotta go slow and you'll increase pressure and you'll usually hear a pop like a little pop, and then you stop. You don't always hear a pop, not every cat pops, but a lot of times they just go This, you gotta be careful. Like I said, gently and then slowly increasing pressure. Okay, that's another way, I just stretch my hat. You can do things like this, like if you wanna just oval out your hat, you could use your knee and stuff. It's, I mean, that does work. Um, pulling the reed out is Definitely good too. If you're going to try to stretch over your knee with that reed in there, eh, you know, you got to get that out too. Uh, what else can we do to stretch a hat? Hmm, not, not very much. Um, there are extreme things that you can do. If you have a hat that's two or three sizes too small and you just cannot wear it, let's say it's your grandfather's hat and it's so small you just can't even get it over you can take the sweat band out. You could just take the entire band out. All you need to do is just get a razor and just very gently go in here and just cut the stitches. One, two, three, four, and then just kind of pull, pull on it, cut the stitches as you pull. The sweat band will come out very easy. Just get a good razor blade, something sharp. Um, if you get that sweat band completely out, you're going to gain a lot of size. That's that's extreme, but um, hey, it works. Let's say this hat was a size small and I'm a medium and it's just way too small. I can't even get it on my head, but I want to wear it. I just, yeah, I just gotta wear it. I don't have any place to stretch it, um, this and that. You take that sweatband out, you're gonna gain a lot of room. Yeah, it's extreme, you know, but yeah, you could always put a, another sweatband in there. You could put a ribbon sweatband Changing your leather sweatband to a ribbon sweat, sweat will give you maybe a size, um, a half a size or something, but that gives you more room. Um, but removing it all together, yeah, that's, that's going to help you a lot. So, you know, like I said, you have to decide if it's worth it or not. You know, taking your, your lining out is nothing. That's disposable, comes in and out. But taking your sweatband out, you know, it's not easy to get it back in. You generally have to sew it back in. I've glued them before, but, uh, you know, so you're not supposed to do that. And um, that's about it. And, uh, yeah, for you guys who want to see this again, this is how you roll a hat. I'm going to show you one more time, okay? Open the crown. All right. Brim goes down. All the way. Okay. Now, the long way, this way. Fold the hat in half, brim to brim. Okay, lay it sideways and now flat, flatten it like this. You're left with a U shape. See the U? Okay, once you get that U shape, turn it around and roll now. Remember, you're not lopping it into quarters. It's not a fold, it's round. It's a roll. So when you look at it, there are no folds, no straight lines, everything is round, no creases anywhere in it. That goes right in your pocket, your pocketbook. Now, if you want to put this in a suitcase or someplace very, very tight, you cannot. What you got to do is you got to get a capsule first, a mailing tube, perfect. Buy a bottle of wine or a bottle of scotch that has that little cardboard tube, you know those little cool capsules? Perfect. Stick it in there and put the tube in your luggage. That's just like so. That's cool, you know. Um, yeah, that's cool. If you have a kid, you know, he'll 
get decorated and write daddy's hats and you know make a little special hat tubey thing. I like that idea. Um, a lot of people just take a shoe box, something like this here, like your Nike shoe box is going to work perfectly. You could go on vacation and put his and hers hats. You could even put two or three hats in a Nike box. Pack that. But don't take this and put it in a suitcase. You're not supposed to. Don't put pressure on this. There's a difference between a foldable, rollable, crushable hat and just like, you know, stomping on it. Yeah, you roll it, you fold it, you know, but you've got to treat it right. So take this, put it in your breast pocket, put it in a nice loose bag like uh, on top of all your stuff, uh, put it in the magazine rack when you're flying, uh, but if you're going to put it in a suitcase, it needs a box or a capsule first, a little tube, all right? You open it up, bam, 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 bring back up, you've got your creases steamed in so you don't worry, and they're there still, one, two, and three, all right, anyway. Guys, take care. You know what? I forgot to play you out, didn't I? Yeah, come on. Let's play. Gotta play you out. That's like the best part of the show, playing them out. All right. From now on, That's enough.